It has been an event-filled five days, hasn't it? As current visiting scholar and incoming co-editor of the Journal of Ella Montgomery Studies, it's been my pleasure and honor to help curate these events, which have emerged from your research, creative projects, and commitment to the Ella Montgomery Institute and community in general. I'll turn the mic over to Kate Scarth, Chair of Ella Montgomery Studies with the Institute, who has a few reminders. All right, I just want to let everyone know that uh, all the content on the forum is permanent. So all of that great material you've been looking at over the five days, um, you're welcome to come back and have another look. We also want to remind you um, that this is just a launch. We're just getting started with the Vision Forum. So you can check out our call for papers or call for other submissions um, about Vision material on the journal website. So basically that means if you want to get, um, you want to be part of the forum, you're welcome to let us know that you'd like to send, submit something up until August 15th, and then you have right until December 31st to send us material. So that could be an article, a blog post, a video, the sky's the limit, really. You can um, let us know by August 15th and then submit the final version by the end of the year, December 31st. And those are the same deadlines if you're looking to submit vision material for the Journal of Ella Montgomery Studies. Just email us and let us know if you have any questions about that. I'd also like to point everyone's attention to our welcome message from Wednesday. Um, and there we thanked and acknowledged all of the many, many people who made the Ella Montgomery and Vision Forum possible. So thanks to all of you. And I'll turn the floor back to Leslie for a minute. But we would be remiss if we did not give a special shout out to Christy McKinney, the girl behind the screen, the technician who recorded Britain Dickinson's podcast, as well as our welcome and this finale. Would it break the magic if I asked Christy to come out from behind the screen and say hello? Oh, she's shy. She's I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Christy, Christy, we could not have done this without you. Quite honestly, uh, you know that right, uh, how how important your role is because we I or I hope you know how important your role is because we can't express our appreciation enough. So thank you very, very much. You're welcome. <laughs> so Kate, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yes, I'd also like to thank um, Emily Worcester, who is the founding co-editor of the Journal of Ella Montgomery Studies. And uh, I know we haven't uh, heard the last of Emily, as I said in the welcome message, because she'll continue to work on the Ella Montgomery and reading material for the website and also for a print edition. And uh, Emily will be handing the reins over to Leslie. And of course, Leslie is our new um, co-editor for the journal. And she so she officially becomes the co-editor on July 1st. But, you know, she's really uh, been thrown into the deep end. She's already really uh, an integral part of the journal team, um, at, especially as we've built the, uh, the vision forum. So thanks to Emily and uh, a very hearty welcome to, to Leslie. We're delighted to have you on the journal um, at, at, as a journal co-editor, not just on the journal editorial board. So now, the moment that everybody has been waiting for, as promised, we have some important announcements that are usually made at the Saturday night banquet. One announcement that would have been made at, at the banquet is the Elizabeth Epperly Award for Outstanding Early Career Paper. So Kate, would you like to say something about that and a reminder that there's still time for submissions? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, of course, this award is named for Elizabeth R. Epperly, Betsy Epperly, who is the founder of the Ellen Montgomery Institute and a beloved and uh, impressive Ellen Montgomery scholar. Um, so this award honors uh, Betsy's contributions to Ellen Montgomery studies and to the Ellen Montgomery Institute. And uh, the Early Career uh, Paper Award was awarded for the last time, or for the first time, at the 2018 uh, conference to Bonnie Tullock um, from the University of British Columbia. And uh, we are, uh, again, um, looking for submissions for this award. And so you have until September 1st uh, to submit papers um, for the award. And we're looking for drafts for the journal. So it's a little bit different than last time. We're 
looking for your uh, peer-reviewed articles in development, um, feel free to reach out to Leslie or I if you have any questions about that. So again, September 1st is the important deadline, and we're really looking forward to getting submissions from early career uh, researchers. And you can find out more information about that award on the LM Montgomery Institute website. All right, so back to Leslie for two more awards. So two awards that we will be announcing today are the Francis Bulger Award and the Ellen Montgomery Institute Legacy Award. Philip Smith, who's the chair of the Ellen Montgomery Institute Committee, has joined us today to make these announcements. Philip. Thank you, Leslie, and hello to everybody. Uh, as Kate mentioned, the Ellen Montgomery Institute initiated our awards program in 2018. That was marking the Institute's 25th anniversary. We normally would be announcing this year's awards when we would be able to celebrate in person with the recipients being honored. We celebrate this year's honorees today and will again with the 2022 recipients when we gather on Prince Edward Island two years from now. So first, the Reverend Dr. Francis W.P. Bolger Award is presented for outstanding contributions to our appreciation of Montgomery and place in Prince Edward Island through scholarship, education, preservation, creative works, and by other means. This year's recipients of the Reverend Dr. Francis W.P. Bolger Award is the Anne of Green Gables Museum and the Campbell family. One of Ellen Montgomery's favorite places to visit was the farm home of her merry cousins and of her aunt Annie and Uncle John Campbell in Park Corner, Prince Edward Island. Montgomery called the Campbell House the wonder castle of my childhood and featured it as Silver Bush in her two Pat novels. It was a second home to her. Maud Montgomery and Ewan MacDonald were married in the Campbell Parlor and the Anne of Green Gables Museum today preserves the parlor, Montgomery's bedroom, and several other rooms as they were in Montgomery's time. George and Pamela Campbell and their siblings grew up in this historic house full of Montgomery memories and clan stories they happily share with visitors. George and Maureen have made sure their children, Julia, Nicholas, and Emily, and now grandchildren are keenly alive to their Campbell and Montgomery heritage. Montgomery prized the Campbell's famed hospitality. Today, the Campbell's graciously introduced visitors from all over the world to Montgomery's life and writing and to her unique connections with the Park Corner property, including the authentic Lake of Shining Waters. It is our pleasure to recognize the Anne of Green Gables Museum and the Campbell family. The Ella Montgomery Institute Legacy Award is presented for outstanding lifetime contributions in building Montgomery scholarship and or public engagement. This year, two LM Montgomery Institute Legacy Awards are being presented. In alphabetical order, to Mary Beth Cavard and to Carolyn Strong Collins. Mary Beth Cavard, an accomplished educator is a Montgomery scholar, collector, and author whose work not only deepens knowledge of Montgomery, but also immeasurably enriches the scholarship and understanding of others. Beth did not grow up reading Montgomery. Instead, she became a fan in the 1980s because she had a red-haired daughter and so many people urged her to read Anne of Green Gables. Carolyn Collins asked Beth Cavard to publish a newsletter for the Ellen Montgomery Literary Society in Minnesota that Carolyn had recently organized. Beth created The Shining Scroll. Over time, Beth developed the newsletter into a premier place to share Montgomery news and scholarship, writing much of it herself. When Carolyn Collins and Christina Erickson led literary society members on a tour of Montgomery's Island in 1992, Beth and her daughter were among the eager number. Fortunate to be with other Montgomery readers, including inspirational collector and friend, the late Christy Wooster, at a time when Montgomery scholarship was burgeoning, Beth decided to jump fully into the Montgomery world. She attended the first LMMI conference in 1994 and everyone since, 
and has and became inspired to quote explore Montgomery's biography through the lens of her friendship as identified in her book dedications end quote. No one else has found more nor shared it so generously than Beth Cavard about the significant friendships Montgomery's book dedications represent. Insightful, indefatigable, extraordinarily personable, Beth has sought out and engaged relevant family members and tracked down elusive details about a significant network of people in Montgomery's life about whom we would otherwise know little. This sleuthing work and her keen eye for a story yet to be told also led Beth to investigate more about George Boyd McMillan's 39-year correspondence with Montgomery. With the blessing of the Reverend Dr. Francis W.P. Bolger and Dr. Elizabeth Epperly, co-editors of a small collection of Montgomery's letters to Macmillan, Beth undertook the monumental work of transcribing and fully annotating for publication the complete correspondence to Macmillan. Mary Beth Cavard is prominent among the friends of the Ellen Montgomery Institute. A go-to source for Montgomery information, she is the trusted colleague and friend of numerous Montgomery family members and scholars. Beth is a remarkable builder of connections and relationships, and her work on Montgomery's friendships, kinship ties, and paratexts is invaluable. The Ella Montgomery Institute is proud to recognize Mary Beth Cavard's multiple and ongoing contributions to Ella Montgomery's legacy. Carolyn Strom Collins has made decades-long contributions to the Montgomery world as author, collector, independent scholar, and as creator of networks for those who love the works of Ella Montgomery. Carolyn read Anne of Green Gables as a girl, but it was when she introduced her daughter to the novel and decided to read it along with her that she became captivated not only by the Anne books, but by Ellen Montgomery herself and by Prince Edward Island. As Carolyn read Anne with her daughter, she began making lists of contrasts between the late 1800s and modern life. Those lists eventually led to a book, The Anne of Green Gables Treasury, Viking Penguin, 1991, written with Christina Weiss Erickson. Together, they also created The Anne of Green Gables Christmas Treasury and The Anne of Green Gables Treasury of Days, as well as companion books to works of other authors. In 1991, Carolyn founded with Christina the Ellen Montgomery Literary Society based in Minnesota. Member Mary Beth Cavert was recruited to edit the Society's annual newsletter, The Shining Scroll, an invaluable resource for articles related to Montgomery, her works, and PEI. Carolyn has been part of each Ellen Montgomery International Conference since the first symposium in 1994. In 2012, she founded the Friends of the Ellen Montgomery Institute, which supports the Institute's collection by accepting donations and with a silent auction at each conference. Carolyn became an avid collector of Montgomery materials, including hundreds of books, magazines, articles, and photographs. She is a meticulous Montgomery detective, evidenced, for example, in her editing an annotated bibliography of Ella Montgomery's stories and poems, published by the Institute in 2016, and updating Rhea Wilmer's 1986 bibliography. And its companion, A Guide to Ella Montgomery's Story and Poem Scrapbooks, 1890 to 1940, also published by the Institute in 2016. While putting the new bibliography together, a small group of independent researchers located many of the titles in Wilmer's quote, unverified ledger titles, end quote. Carolyn, with longtime friend and literary society member, the late Christy Wooster, compiled and edited those as After Many Years, 21 Long Lost Stories by Ellen Montgomery, published by the Institute in 2016 and by Nimbus in 2017. Carolyn's most recent publication is the edited and annotated transcription of 
Anne of Green Gables, the original manuscript, published last year by Nimbus. Carolyn is a longtime summer resident of Prince Edward Island, even having served as a guide for the Ellen Montgomery Heritage Museum in Park Corner. She has built relationships with those now living on Montgomery's Island, coming to experience Montgomery's sense of place and community. Carolyn brings those experiences to her research and her writing, helping us to better appreciate Montgomery's life, times, work, and ongoing influence. The Ellen Montgomery Institute is proud to recognize Carolyn Strong Collins with the 2020 Legacy Award. So congratulations to our 2020 award recipients. We're moving on from awards to consideration of another big reveal, and that is the new visiting scholar who will be taking up position in 2021. Now, the Institute has a, a long legacy of really important and beneficial and exciting visiting scholars over the years. The visiting scholar serves as a member of the Ellen Montgomery Institute committee, is somebody who's available to help the committee respond to questions that come in from students and scholars and the general public about Montgomery. And a very big part of the visiting scholars role is serving as co-chair of the next year's uh, biennial conference. So the visiting scholar will be doing that in year one and often visiting scholars uh, extend for a second year of work where they continue on with the responsibilities that they had had, but also take up uh, responsibilities for serving as co-editor for a special issue of the Journal of Ellen Montgomery Studies that focuses on the papers coming out of the conference, which they just co-chaired. So Leslie, you have some news for us on visiting scholars. I do. I have the pleasure of announcing the next visiting scholar whose tenure begins in July 2021 and with whom I will co-chair the next biennial conference, which will take place the 22nd to the 26th of June, 2022. So watch out for the call for papers that come out in the falls sometime towards the end of November. Our next visiting scholar is Professor of History at the University of Western Ontario. He researches and teaches Canadian history with an emphasis on environmental and climate history. He was born and raised on Prince Edward Island, so it's particularly appropriate that he has a book under contract with McGill Queen's University Press entitled The Summer Trade, A History of Tourism on Prince Edward Island. In his tenure as the next visiting scholar, he will be writing a book about the 30-year diary of Myrtle Webb, who owned Green Gables House and even continued living in it for a decade after it became part of the National Park. Please welcome Alan McEachran as the next visiting scholar with the LM Montgomery Institute. Welcome, Alan. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Hi, everybody. I'm honored and excited to be the next LM Montgomery Institute visiting scholar and to be co-chairing the 2022 conference. And as such, I have the pleasure to announce the theme for 2022. Drum roll, please. The theme is revision. Revision, of course, plays off the vision theme of the 2020 conference. Uh, the hope that 2022 offers us a second chance to see those who didn't get a chance to see each other in person this year. And it's certainly imagined that some of the proposals for 2020 will fit in 2022. But more than that, revision stands on its own as encouraging papers about the revision of literary works, translations, uh, revisions that occurred in Montgomery's own life, etc. We hope it's a theme that will attract a wide range of interpretations from a wide range of disciplines. Okay, I'll turn it back to Leslie. Bye for now. So thank you, and again, welcome, Alan. I, I'm really looking forward to working with you over the next couple of years. I am struck 
by how appropriate the next conference theme is for several reasons beyond the, uh, the what what um, Alan mentioned, um, and that is it allows us to revisit the vision theme. But first, what I want to stress is that it's very appropriate in terms of Alan's teaching philosophy. On Alan's department webpage, he writes, and I quote, a healthy society spends most of its energies trained on the present and the future. But a healthy society also devotes some of its energies to remembering and understanding the past. The historian's job is to tell or remind people today about the lives of others in the past. That's it. Doing so goes a small way to fulfilling the obligation that people of the past are not forgotten. And it holds a promise and a threat to people of today that they won't be forgotten either. A promise and a threat to people of today that they won't be forgotten either. Such important words. Looking to the past gives us so many opportunities for revising the direction that the future takes by examining how we've reached this present moment in time, as we re are reminded so vividly by current events. I encourage you to look at the resources posted on the forum today when you consider one of the many ways that we can revise, re-see, and rethink Montgomery's legacy. By the 22nd of June, 2022, lots of 22, so it shouldn't be difficult to remember. So by the 22nd of June, 2022, I anticipate that we will have all broken out of our screen boxes, quite likely and hopefully with a new vision of how we would like our present and future to look. And of course, by extension, how we see our past. We will converse in actual space, no more pulsing, or yellow highlighted boxes to signal who is speaking. In the meantime, break out of your box and take the virtual tour posed on today's forum. So until we meet again in real time and real space, it sounds like the finale of a Broadway musical. <laughs> so until we meet again in real time and real space, continue to visit the forum as we roll out new content over the next six to eight months. Bye for now.